Welcome everyone. Uh, this is the uh, Drupal Certified Partners Participation in Drupal Starshot webinar uh, for Drupal Certified Partners and other agencies uh, sponsored by the Drupal Association. We're going to get started here in about uh, 30 seconds. Let me just make sure that we're recording the call uh, and we'll get into the presentation. It'll last about an hour. All right, thank you everyone for joining me today. My name is Tim Doyle. I'm the CEO of the Drupal Association. Um, this is the call uh, for Drupal certified partners and other agencies interested in how they can participate in the Drupal Starshot initiative. I'm joined by uh, Therese Baitar, uh, and we'll, together we'll be uh, spending time with you over the next hour uh, talking about Starshot. The goals today really are to help you understand as an agency how you can participate in and support uh, Drupal Starshot. Uh, second, let you know what we're doing to incentivize and recognize those contributions. Uh, and then third, uh, have some takeaways so that you can um, go back, do your homework, figure out how your agency wants to contribute or is able to contribute, and then uh, go from there. We'll have a mechanism by which you can, can uh, sign up and participate. Yeah. Uh, um, hey everyone. By the way, just wanted to say hi. Thank you, Dries. I know Dries is joining us directly from another meeting. Thank you for actually it was a meeting about Starshot with the Drupal core committers. So it was a, it was a good meeting, but uh, it's why it was a minute late. Perfect. No worries. Um, we're going to ask everyone to stay on mute and and hold questions to the end. We should have plenty of time for questions, and that's when we really want to get into uh, the conversation with you. So we have a a, a deck that I will go through. It'll take about 15 minutes, um, and that will be made available to you um, uh, after the call. Uh, and so um, if you can hold your question to the end, you can come off mute and ask questions that way or via um, chat. So let's just jump into it. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the call. Um, first, I want to start with an update on the Drupal Certified Partner Program. Uh, as you know, uh, Drupal, as a digital public good really relies on our ecosystem of agencies and individual contributors that maintain the project. So we started uh, last year to try to enhance the Drupal Certified Partner Program um, so that it does really three things. First, we wanted, as an association supporting the Drupal project, we wanted the Drupal Certified Partner Program to promote and encourage a culture of contribution among the agencies that sell Drupal services that rely on Drupal for their for their business. Uh, second, we want to provide sufficient resources to the project and to the community so that Drupal can thrive and still and still maintain its independence. And then lastly, uh, we want to recognize uh, agencies of varying sizes uh, that meet this minimum commitment to help Drupal thrive. Um, and uh, what's known as makers, right? So there are companies in any kind of open source project, there are gonna be companies that, uh, that contribute at a certain level that really can sustain the project. And that's what we want the Drupal Certified Partner Program to be. You know, when we look at our mission for, of the Drupal Association, our mission really is that, that big green circle you see, which is to make sure Drupal's free and available to anyone anywhere in the world to use. Um, and currently we have about 2,300 agencies or organizations that have an account on Drupal.org and hundreds of thousands of individuals over the last 23 years have created an account. And that's who we serve. That's our public mission. It's why we're a not-for-profit um, to serve that and to ensure that Drupal is free and available to anyone, anywhere in the world. Of those agencies that are on the system, only about 25% contribute anything back to Drupal. Um, this is roughly uh, numbers we ran over the last couple of years, uh, and that includes end users. So we have a lot of large organizations that are uh, that have IT staff that contribute back. Um, they are um, uh, they are very strong members of the community, and we encourage that. But what we're really focused on is the uh, Drupal certified partners, and these are the makers. That this is the group that um, that meet this that help us sustain Drupal. 
um, that meet a minimum level of contribution to the project to the co and to the community um, that will allow um, Drupal to thrive. And our goal here with this program is to um, recognize that and incentivize that behavior um, and hopefully so that Drupal certified partners begin to see uh, benefits accruing to the commitment that they've made. Um, we started this project about this kind of reinvention about a year ago, uh, thinking one, how to improve the program to really make it Hey, Tim, you are muted all of a sudden. Test, test, Tim, try one more time. Yeah, thank you. I think, I think Kelly gotcha. is muting everyone. And then- You know uh, what, y'all? I'm going to mute everyone. And then T2, sorry, yeah. Tim Doyle. And Drews, do you mind unmuting yourselves? Yep, we sounds have good. Background. Yep. Awesome. So then when, when folks need to come off at the end, they'll just unmute themselves. Thank you, Kelly, for, for handling that. I appreciate it. Um, so we started about a year ago to re-envision the program and then second to encourage companies to join. Uh, we've had strong success since uh, last August. We've more than doubled the number of Drupal certified partners. Uh, and you know our the strategic plan that we implemented a year ago, the board approved, had a goal of 106. So we're well on our way to making the 106 Drupal certified partners. But we've also realized in that time that probably 106 wasn't ambitious enough. Um, for the amount of work and that needs to be done. And so we are actually looking, well, uh, uh, technically the strategic plan calls for 106. We're actually looking globally to go well above that number in order to accomplish everything that the board wants to accomplish. Um, the, so what can you, so as a Drupal certified partner, what you can expect over the coming year, one is uh, if you're um, currently a certified partner under the new requirements, great, thank you. Uh, if if you're under the old requirements, as your due date comes new, uh, your renewal date comes near, we're going to ask you to renew into the new program. Um, and so, what you should do is review the benefits, decide what your agency's goals are, and then what we'll take to get to the, those goals, um, and uh, to to participate in the new program. Second, uh, now that the changes to the program are underway, and uh, Kelly and her team are working with you with uh, agencies to join the program. The Drupal Association has contracted with a uh, an outside firm to help us market the Drupal Certified Partner Program outside the community to the um, to the public, to the CMS buying public, if you will, um, to help educate folks what it means to be a Drupal Certified Partner. Why, if they're working with uh, companies, they should um, they should prefer to work with a Drupal Certified Partner uh, and um, and, and uh, the benefits uh, accrue to them as an organization when they engage with such companies. So we're beginning that, now that the program's underway, we're beginning that process to market the program outside the community to the public. Um, you should look at your budgets um, and, um, and you know, decide where you wanna be within the program um, and then to begin to allot for it in two, in two ways. One is uh, it's kind of a cost of doing business in order to maintain Drupal. If you rely on Drupal, um, we need to, ensure that Drupal is vibrant and thriving. So that's part of the where the contribution goes. The second, it's an investment in your brand. Um, you know, if as a Drupal certified partner, we hope you accrue tons of benefits uh, by being part of a group that uh, is known outside the community as committed to uh, the upkeep of Drupal, they're committed uh, to making sure that Drupal has the resources and, and the investment of, of contribution, both code and otherwise, uh, to, to thrive. Um, and then lastly, this is a year journey as we transition to this new program, we look for feedback from you. So my, my Zoom is always open for, for calls and, and comments back about what's working from the program. Are you getting the benefits as you create this culture of contribution, as you commit, are you getting the benefits that you want to see uh, in the marketplace um, from, from uh, this designation? Uh, it's a hopefully a virtuous cycle that if if we can encourage a, a culture of contribution, agencies take that on, they see more business, that allows us to do more to encourage um, uh, more folks to join uh, the Drupal Certified Partner Program and so forth. Um, so your feedback is very important to us as we go through this journey over the coming year. Okay, let me, I'm gonna pause here and just um, turn it over to Therese who can just talk if, Therese, if you can talk for five or 10 minutes about 
um, uh, the steps you're taking in June, the meetings and so forth to organize the star, the triple star shot initiative um, around um, uh, Ahead, yeah. contribution. So maybe um, I could share my screen for a couple of minutes if that's helpful. Yeah. It allows me to. Um, sorry, I didn't um, that's fine. Pl plan on sharing my screen, but like, um, I will tell you, like, um, coming back from DrupalCon, um, I had so many ideas and next steps, and I've been meeting with, um, you know, agency people and uh, people interested in helping for like the last weeks, every day. <laughs> it's, been, it's been really nice. And uh, so I created this, like, just to, to give you a sense, like, I created all these next steps. I, I, you don't have to read them, but like, they're like 100 plus next steps. Also, like we had um, 385 people pledge. Like if you saw the Dries note in the middle of the Dries note, um, I asked people to like pledge to help. And uh, 385 people actually signed up to help, which is incredible. And for all of these people, we have their their experience and, you know, what they're good at, how they want to help, um, their you know, their skills. And so I've been thinking about how do we organize that. And so I've been... Um, how do we activate all these people? So we created this notion of an engagement calendar where basically in the next five week, weeks, I'm going to do like eight or nine webinars to and invite all of the people that pledged and everybody beyond that, to be honest, to join. And we will get people up to speed and onboard it in terms of helping. So we created this calendar. Uh, we sent it out um, last Friday. We also updated uh, the Starshot page on Drupal.org. If you go to drupal.do slash starshot and you scroll down, you can see all the sessions and the agenda. So like just to pick one real quick, I picked a random one here, but a project browser obviously is a key part of starshot. So what we're going to do is we're going to give a quick update on where's project browser at, uh, help people understand what it is and how it fits into starshot, maybe a quick demo, but then we would go into a roadmap presentation for project browser. And we would work with Chris and Leslie, the initiative leads on grooming uh, issues and creating meta issues. So we can then basically explain to people, uh, here's the things that we need the most help with. Here's the specific issues. And we can try and or start to connect individuals willing to contribute or agencies willing to contribute to specific things. And so we're doing this in fairly rapid, um, um, you know, meeting like fairly rapid you can see june 10th june 11 june 14 so we're going to do a lot of those really quickly because we have a big sense of urgency um we're changing the time zone so people can attend across the world but we're also going to work with uh, tim and the da to create an archive of these recordings so you can watch them uh, at any point uh, if you want to get your teams onboarded and uh, we'll help create summaries and all of these things as well and uh, we're going to continue to do other things and more things. Like if you scroll down and you look at this engagement calendar, so like we have DrupalCon Barcelona as the next big event, uh, which is 119 days away. And we're going to fill out all of these um, days uh, with things that we want to hit and achieve. Um, so yeah, I've been working on a lot of these things and more things in the last two weeks. I know it's been a little bit silent maybe coming back um after DrupalCon, but it's because i've been processing a lot of information uh starting to set up a lot of work streams and uh yeah now we're starting to kick off a lot of things and uh, the first kind of webinar is actually this friday where we'll give an update on um the governance model for starshots and maybe we can even give a like a summary version of this meeting on like sort of how we're gonna um, you know, help get certified uh, Drupal partners involved. So, is there anything else you wanted me to hit, Tim? Or that, that was perfect. Okay. You you ended that with a perfect segue to how Drupal certified partners can get involved. Um, perfect. So, thank you. And so, Dries will stay on uh, for the yep. remainder of the call. Uh, to end. so at the end, we'll have Q and A on anything that he said. So, um, let me just go through next uh, less than ten minutes on how Drupal certified partners and or those agencies that are trying to become Drupal certified partners um, can participate in Starshot. Um, really, we look at, at time, talent, and treasure is foundational to the certified 
partner program. Um, and we know that as agencies, when you become a Drupal certified partner, um, that culture of contribution uh, can fall in any of those categories. Uh, your staff time, your staff expertise, or particular expertise, uh, or or uh, financial donations. Uh, we think it's um, while not a requirement of the program at all to get involved in Starshot, we think Drupal Starshot can enhance your certification uh, reputation among the community and outside the community. I think part of the value proposition of being a certified partner, and then additionally being involved in Drupal Starshot, which is um, you know, obviously an initiative that's getting a lot of attention um, throughout the community. And if successful, we'll get a lot of attention outside the community, which is one of the goals is to get new people to make Drupal a little more accessible to junior or to site builders uh, and, and junior developers that they are and end users that are much easier to, to try it out and sample it. So as a certified partner, uh, I think the value proposition for you is to participate not only in the, in the Drupal Certified Partner Program, but additionally to think about how your agency can get involved in Drupal Starshot. Is the you know it's an opportunity as every um, contribution is to build your staff's expertise um, as you contribute their time to the project. Uh, as a company, you get a reputation um, as a place that values contribution, and so hopefully that helps with staff retention attracting uh, the, the type of developers you want to uh, um, attract, uh, staff retention, because they see that not only is their individual or are they contributing to the project, but that they're a corporate, that they're the company they work for is a contributor to the project. And then strength and profile among customers. And that's really what the Drupal Association wants to encourage is that, um, that the Drupal certified partners are seen as kind of the inner circle group that is fully committed to the open source project and is, has demonstrated that commitment. And I hope that translates when folks are shopping for a partner to work with, they wanna work with a partner that's as committed to, um, the, to the open source software that they're offering um, as, as possible. Uh, and so what we wanna do at the Drupal Association is to find a way to recognize that and incentivize that uh, and to do it in a, in a way that's transparent um, and in a way that's equitable. Um, so there's really three principles that we're following. One, first and foremost, um, the contribution of time and talent is the priority. That's what we would ideally like agencies to consider first and foremost is, do you have staff bench time and do you have expertise that could really help on the project? Second, um, financial donations are very valid uh, form of contribution. Um, but as those are made, we need um, the way that we will credit companies for those uh, contributions needs to be uh, uh, well understood and transparent. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And then lastly, we at the DA uh, have a lot of um, things that we need to do to support um, this initiative, the Drupal Starshot. So we've got D.org that needs to be updated and rebranded. Uh, we will need to market Starshot independently of, of other marketing activities that we do with Drupal. Um, we uh, have, will have resources and need to provide resources to folks that are interested in trying out uh, trying out Starshot or getting involved or understanding how to use it, et cetera. Um, and then we have obviously project specific requirements in terms of project browser and automatic updates that we have to deliver in order for Starshot to be successful. Um, so one thing we recognize is that we need resources in, in house to help manage our role with uh, Drupal Starshot. Um, and that is, um, Along with asking for contributions, we are also committing hiring someone to help manage our role within um, the Starshot initiative. Um, so in order to reward contributions of time or talent, so you as a Drupal certified partner may choose uh, to look at your staff and say, hey, we wanna participate with Drupal Starshot and I think we can devote some staff time and expertise. Um, we are, uh, we'll be enhancing the credit that you receive um, as a certified partner, um, so that if you, uh, the minimum staff contribution is three months at 50% time. Now that's kind of a theme. Um, obviously if we had two or three people full time for two months, that might work. But the theme is, um, this is not something that can be, uh, that would be as useful if it's only a few days here and there, one week or two weeks, the onboarding, the need to get it to, to give, you saw that big spreadsheet that we said, we have to give confidence that 
resources are there for a sufficient amount of time to get the work done. Um, also, second, uh, the folks that you contribute in general, they need to be experts in the areas that they're that they're that you're asking them to contribute on. There may be roles for junior junior folks. I'm not saying there's not, um, but it's not. This is probably not a, a place where someone can learn a new discipline by contributing their time. Um, and then lastly, to think about is that their work, or whatever, if it's 50%, 75%, 100% of their time, that work will be directed by uh, by the, the Starshot project, product manager uh, in, in terms of what they need when they need it. So I'll go through kind of how, how the credit system will be adjusted for this in a second. Um, but I want to talk about two other, if, if, so the first and foremost is contribution of time and talent. If you can do that, that's our idea. That's what we want to encourage uh, the most, uh, because that's uh, th that will have the biggest impact um, in the shortest amount of time uh, for the project. Uh, but there are two other ways that we that um, financially that you can support Drupal Starshot. One is this idea of an endowment. So uh, for a contribution of at least fifty thousand um, uh, dollars, the Drupal Association would um, hire a, a full time staff, ideally. Uh, to work on some aspect that's necessary that the DA in our role have a, has a particular role in providing. Um, and you will basically help endow either 100% or 50% of that, that individual's time. Um, and that will allow us to focus on a, in an area and get it done completely. So an example of this would be the documentation lead. There's been talk about the need to improve documentation. That really requires someone to be brought on to manage that process, even if it does include volunteers along the way, um, to get it done in a very consistent and, man and managed way. Um, so that would be the endowment. Um, innovation fund, we've set up an innovation fund. And so for a minimum donation of $5,000, um, basically from five to $50,000, uh, we'll use that fund to contract for services, or and and or bring other necessary resources at the direction of Dries and, and the Drupal Starshot product manager. What they need, we'll use the donations there. We've already had companies step up and and begin to make donations. So thank you for that. So let me go through how we will how we will um, incentivize uh, and recognize uh, agencies that contribute to Drupal Starshot. Um, and I think the the first reason to contribute is. Um, if you believe, as I do, that, you know, in a sense, and I know it's not technically correct, but for the first time in 23 years, we're issuing a new version of Drupal. That's how it will look on the market. If we're successful in the market, the market will, that's how they will see it. Um, and you, so the biggest reason to contribute is, I think, having your company associated with that, with that launch, okay, with that, to have your company um, uh, name, logo, et cetera, as part of that, uh, as part of that endeavor to launch for the first time in 23 years, a quote unquote new version of Drupal. Um, what we wanna do at the DA level is to reward that. We're gonna use the credit system. We're gonna use two ways. One is the credit system through, through bounties to reward contributions for Drupal Starshot. And second is through recognition, uh, through social media and, and uh, Drupal cons, et cetera. Um, so let me go through the credit system and then we'll go to um, the non-credit system recognitions, and then we'll go to Q&A. So I've, the three ways of contributing, time and talent, endowment, and a donation to the, to the innovation fund. If we look at the first, the time and, uh, time and talent, if you are devoting uh, a staff time to um, Drupal Starshot, we, you will get all the organic credits that that contribution or that those individuals generate, plus for each full-time week of, um, of, of donate of, of work, uh, we'll give add a bounty of 50 credits onto that staff times um, onto the credits generated. So as an example, if we had one developer for three months at 50%, that's one eighth of their year, um, and they organically generated 200 credits, they would get another 300 <laughs> credits with the bounty. Um, if, <clears throat> In U.S. dollars, their salary was 120,000. Uh, that would be a cost to the firm, to the agency, of about 15,000 or 30 dollars per credit. Um, if you look at opportunity costs, that means that maybe they 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 were on a client project and they're not selling it, and then it goes up to 60 dollars. And these are estimates to kind of give you a relative sense of 
of of um, the contributions that you could that you could uh, <laughs> at this time. But that fifty dollars is not relative. That the fifty credits per week is is um, that's solid. Um, so let me go to the endowment. So the next two are the financial contributions. If you endow um, a, a role, a position at the Drupal Association, you will again get all the organic credits generated by that individual, plus one dollars per hundred, one credit per hundred dollars donated. Um, so if we look at just keep the math simple, a sixty thousand dollar contribution to endow half of a position, if they generate the same type of credits as they use in the first example. That would be uh, 800 credits for for the 1600 for the year, 800 for the half endowment, um, and then another 600 credits uh, uh, based on the bounty. So that would be about 1400 credits and a credit uh, 43 dollars per credit. So um, still very efficient. Again, not as uh, um, the time and talent contribution is a little bit more efficient, but still efficient. Uh, and then lastly, innovation fund for those companies that can contribute financially and want to contribute financially, um, it's one dollar per credit per hundred. I'm sorry, one credit per hundred dollars. Excuse me. This is the thing that we used in Pittsburgh last year at DrupalCon Pittsburgh. If you remember that, it was, I also believe it's the ratio that was used in Drupal Cares during the pandemic. Uh, so it's very, it's it's a very kind of time tested ratio. So a five thousand dollar donation would generate 50, 50 credits. Uh, it's hundred dollars per credit. Obviously, um, you know, to be a to be a Drupal certified partner, you need one hundred fifty credits. So a fifteen thousand dollar donation gets you up to enough credits just to just to maintain your your participation in the Drupal certified partner program. Um, so this is how we're using the credit system. Let me go on to and this in that way, you know, we we've, we're rolling that we will be rolling that out as we are uh, speaking with you and 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 partners are donating time and and uh, um, talent and, and, and dollars. Uh, but we're also looking at how do we, how do we um, recognize uh, the work that agencies are doing when they support Starshot. Um, and so we'll be looking at um, DrupalCon Barcelona and the recently announced DrupalCon Singapore. Both are happening in the next eight months, both during the launch of, uh, of Drupal Starshot. Um, so we're looking at different ways we can recognize folks during the tree snow, um, recognizing uh, recognitions during demonstrations, exhibit hall extras. Um, if companies work on specific module, they take kind of ownership of that. How can we recognize that work? Um, certainly, we will have a Starshot um, section of Drupal.org and, and, and uh, part and parcel with launching a new initiative like Starshot is recognizing those agencies and individuals that have helped us get there. Um, and then uh, social media press releases. In this regard, um, two things. One is we want your ideas about what you would find valuable. We have ideas that we will begin to roll out, um, but we'll love to hear even on this call or after the calls, we have uh, conversations with individual partners. What would be valuable to you to be recognized as part of this initiative um, of Drupal Starshot? Second is we want this to be fair and proportional to the impact of the contribution. So um, that's one of the assessments we're making is how do we recognize you and, and make sure that that recognition is, is commensurate with the impact that you're having? Um, so let me right, we'll pause here. Or I'll, I'll go through this one slide and then we'll pause and go into Q&A. So I'll ask folks uh, in, in a minute here to um, either come off mute and ask a question for me or Dries or to put it in chat. Uh, Kelly's online, she'll help us we'll kind of moderate this. Um, but the next steps that you can expect uh, is first is uh, hopefully you, by the end of this call, you will have had um, enough information that you can begin to plan how you and your agency wishes to contribute to Drupal Starshot. So begin that planning now. Think about your staff. Think about your projects over the coming eight, nine, 12 months. Um, I would note that while there's an ambitious plan to get this launched in eight months, um, the work of Starshot will continue beyond that. Uh, and so our, our credit system work and our recognition work will also continue beyond that. So think about, I would suggest over the next 12 months, um, what your company can do and, and is interested in doing. One, we will, what we'll do is send out a form um, for your company to commit uh, either time, talent and or treasure. And you can do all three. These are not uh, mutually exclusive. Um, you can You can contribute uh, dollars and staff time. Uh, and then lastly, as uh, in our role, 
uh, as kind of organizing these contributions and funneling them to the project as the project needs them, um, uh, our delivery manager, uh, yet to be named, uh, will contact you and work out the de details of your individual contribution. So plan what you think you can do, respond on the on our commit form, and it's not set in stone at that point, but that will give us an, that that will be for us an indication that that uh, kind of a starting point to have a conversation with you, and then we will follow up and work out the details. Um, good. So let me pause there. Uh, we are about uh, at the top of the hour. We have on the call to go to the to the end of the hour, um, and so at this point, what I'd like to do is to uh, have folks uh, come off mute if you wish, or put into the um, chat, uh, any questions or issues that you might have that you want us to, to comment on, and, and Teresa and I will try to do that. So let me go through. Um, um, there's a few questions, questions in the chat. Yep. Tim, you want to check them out? Do you see them? Um, yep. Yeah, let me go through. And if I don't get your question right, if I butcher your question, please either rechat or um, or come off mute and def and defend your question. Um, so uh, Joe Murray will work on hours. How many hours for 1.5 months of developer time? Uh, so I'm not 100% sure um, what you mean by that. But if uh, I would assume that if you're talking about the um, if you had 1.5 months of developer time at um, 100%, um, that would be six weeks. So under the, that would be an extra, if I do my math right, 300 credits in, a, in addition to the um, the organic credits that that uh, individual would, con would, would accrue during their work. Thanks. So the question was for six weeks of developer time, is that at 35 hours a week or 38 hours a week or 40 hours a week? Um, so I'm happy understanding the six weeks of developer time. It's more, how many hours does that work out to? Great question. Uh, I don't think we've gotten to that level of detail. Uh, no problem. Something yeah, to yeah. consider. Yep. Um, no, my next my next question was, um, um, we're a tiny shop. And um, so I'm wondering about um, spreading the commitment out over a longer period and over more developers. Um, and whether you'd accept something like two people uh, doing that six week commitment over six months, or is that too little? I can try and answer that. I sure. think yeah. I think it's worth considering, Joe. Um, we just would need to find sort of the appropriate work that they can do. Because I imagine some of the work, it's hard to spread out, you know, yeah. in small in small chunks over time. But maybe other types of work, maybe it is okay. Like I could imagine, like help contributing to one of the core building blocks um, of Drupal Starship might be hard to spread out because there's a lot of other people involved. But maybe working on certain documentation sections, maybe that is something that could be done in increments uh, like you described, so. Yeah, so I think what I would um, suggest would be to, you know, think what you can do, put that in the commit form, and then um, uh, let, we'll let the project assess, like, is it the type of commit that, as Teresa just said, would work over that time in that way, or is it is it is it a need that they have maybe a more intensive need that wouldn't fit? Um, and that's why when I said three months, 50%, I want people thinking in that amount of time, but not, I don't want to say, well, it has to be full time or half time, three months straight. You know, I think we can open as long as we're minimizing the onboarding, offboarding friction and, and cost, if you will, of multiple folks. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm just at the brainstorming step. So yep. this is helpful. Yeah. yeah. And, and so are we. So we appreciate that, that question. Um, it is, Tim, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was going to go to the next one. Um, one was just interesting. You need committed developers or committed hours from the, the DCP's team. Maybe just um, clarify that. Hmm. Uh, so, good, Dries, you want to answer that? Yeah, one? I can start. Like, I mean, our preference would be 
committed developers. Like I imagine like some of the work we have to do is, um, you know, it's hard to do like in little bits and pieces. And I imagine there might be even some substantial onboarding time for your developers too. Like imagine having to contribute to a, you know, a part of Starshot, it might take a developer, you know, days to truly get up to speed or maybe longer even to get up to speed. So if, if um, you know, so it's preferable, I would say, to have um, sort of dedicated developers so that we don't have to onboard 12 people. Um, you know, it's better for us to onboard one person and then to be able to collaborate with one person versus having all the cost of multiple people and context switching and onboarding. So that would be the preference uh, for me personally. But um, again, maybe it depends on the type of work. Uh, some work might be easier to, you know, spread across multiple people. Okay, so can you share across like uh, the list or kind of uh, people or kind of hands we need like developers, themers, administrators, documenter, editors, so we're, that will help uh, us to identify which hands from our team can help on this yeah. cause. Yeah, we're going to need all of those. <laughs> is a short version. Um, one, one of the big gaps that I think we have, because um, I think the goal of this call, well, first of all, I appreciate the questions because they suggest a willingness to help, right? Um, which I appreciate. I think one of the big gaps is we need to define work packages is what I call it. I don't know if that's the right word, but we need to say, here's 30 things that we need to do. And for each of these work packages, we can um, we can basically write a little bit of a scope or requirements, or can even try and specify what kind of skill sets we're looking for, um, and that will make it then easier, I think, for all of you that are willing to help to see. All right, I have some people on staff on my on my staff, and they match the time and the skill set matches, or the size of the of the project based on the scope and the skill sets that I have on staff matches. Um, so I think there's a lot of work that we can do to help you um, kind of get involved. Because it, I think it's going to be very difficult for you to get involved without us really managing. And, um, and Tim and I have been talking about this, and it's why we want to, you know, hire um, a, a contribution coordinator. You know, think of it maybe in your language. As an agency, it's like a, I don't know what you call it, but like a delivery manager or a project manager, somebody that helps extract um, the, the requirements, if you will, on one hand and, and helps enable uh, somebody to get involved. We don't have that. I mean, I think it's clear, but we don't have that today. That's going to be a big next step for us to define these things. Yes. And I think that's why I was just add two comments. One, this is going to be a process over the coming, in my mind, 12 months as we work through some of these things. So it's not as if we have all the answers now. Um, and this conversation is the beginning of hearing what the questions are that we may not have answered uh, and adding those to the work that we know we need to do. Um, but we also think it'll be a, a, an evolution as we hear from uh agencies about what they may be able to offer and ideas, and then we can look at, at what the work to be done and how do we structure it. Um, I have had, on a second note, I have had a company or two reach out and say, hey, I might have a whole team that's available for a month or for a certain amount of time. Um, and to Dries's point, I, which was totally a, a product manager and Dries's call, but individual developers at, at their disposal is obviously the easiest integer to work with, the, into, the easiest number to apply to where you need it. Um, but there may be opportunities if you, if there are whole teams that could take on a chunk of work somewhat independently uh, to move the project along. Um, so I would not, um, of the inter individual developer commitment is probably the most ideal from a management perspective. If there are teams, if you have groups, um, don't preclude that, let's have a conversation to see if there's something that, that would work on that. Um, if I go to a, uh, kind of, um, Kristen asked a question about uh, um, gaming the credit system. So I think I'll just echo what she said in chat, which is uh, the work's going to be directed by the 
um, product manager by the project. So um, the gaming is harder, uh, if not hopefully impossible, because um, there's there's uh, someone who knows what has to happen will be directing the work and it's not left to the developer necessarily or the individual to figure out what they need to do. Um, and then on a larger note, we recognize with the greater focus on the Drupal Certified Partner Program, the credit system uh, is getting more attention. So we are aware when companies um, and have protocols in place to try to address when individuals or companies are um, uh, gaming and, and, and working on things that are not as valuable just to try to generate a lot of credits. So that's a broader issue. I don't think that'll impact. I don't think that would be an issue in Starshot. In fact, I think it's the opposite. But we are aware of that issue more broadly and, and are taking steps to, to address it. Um, uh, question from Nash. Are you also looking for Scrum Masters? Yeah, we are going to look for yeah people that can help organize and manage contributors. Scrum Masters, I mean, that's very specific, but potentially, yeah. Like sometimes volunteers don't always want to work in Scrum, but um, I think the skill sets that a Scrum Master has, whether we use Scrum to the letter, if you will, or some kind of variant of Scrum, I think will be welcome. Then there's a question from uh, Hiro, I think, uh, about mm -hmm. do we need front-end and back-end developers? And the answer is yes, we need both. Because uh, uh, one of the sub parts, I guess, of Starshot is the new experience builder. And that's going to definitely require quite a bit of front end development. Uh, and I would say historically, we've been able to recruit back end developers easier than we have been able to recruit front end developers. And um, I think it's going to be really important to attract design talent, user experience talent, as well as front-end developers. I think the whole goal of Drupal Starshot, as you probably know, is to um, make uh, an easy to use version of Drupal that works really well out of the box. And that's also optimized for ambitious site builders, marketers, content creators. So non-technical or less technical people. And it's going to really need us to step up our game in terms of design. And obviously then once it is designed and, and user tested, we will have to implement um, those designs and that's going to require front-end development. And it's a little bit of um, a muscle, I would say, that we don't have in the Drupal projects. And I say that broadly, but like we want to get better at that. You know, we need to do more design, more user research and then build beautiful UIs. So yes, long long answer uh, to your simple question, but I think I wanted to give you the context as well of why I believe we need both. And I think that answers uh, Gregor's question about do as well. Yeah. And I think the answer is yes. And I would add to that just uh, um, we, you know we're seeing that with our own work with Drupal.org. We are updating from Drupal seven to Drupal ten. We are implementing a new brand. Um, and obviously, we're using this as an opportunity to rethink um, how we present Drupal.org uh, to the uh, three audiences that we think are primary the um, customers. One is the, the community. The biggest the biggest cohort is the community users. And what do they need out of Drupal.org? Separately, what do marketers and folks that are shopping for a CMS that are in interest outside the community that are interested in Drupal, what do they need out of Drupal.org? Very different than what the community needs. And then lastly, um, folks that want to understand about the Drupal Association. So again, it may be a little bit longer way, also a longer way of saying all that requires a lot of design work um, and, um, and and kind of UI work that um, we need that's uh, directly related to, to Drupal Starshot as we try to fulfill our roles in that, but also more broadly, just on Drupal.org to make it appealing to marketers and make it appealing to people shopping for a CMS. So let's, I would continue to encourage folks to ask questions in the chat and or come off come off mute and, and just uh, verbally uh, speak up. Um, Kristen has another question. Does funding an existing core maintainer qualify for this? They work across all core initiatives. So it's not just Starshot. Um, I think so because 
I mean, that's my initial take, Tim. But like the reason I say yes is because Drupal Starshot is built on Drupal Core, and it's going to need certain things from Drupal Core. So, um, yeah, I, I do think that could qualify. Um, maybe there's a way to specify because certain things that we're working on in Drupal Core are really important for Starshot, and other things are not needed for Starshot. So maybe there is a way to, you know, even direct or even like, uh, I don't know, uh, segment some of the core work as Starshot related versus maybe all core work broadly. But um, there's definitely a lot of work that needs to happen in core, like recipes as an example, which is one of the fundamental build building blocks of Starshot um, is in core. So that kind of work will be really important to continue um, as an example. And Andres, I would, I would agree. Um, I think the open question in my mind is there's a lot to be done to get to, to, to reach Drupal Starshot in eight or nine months. Um, mm -hmm. And so certainly the incentive structures that we set up were set up to try to spur involvement in that because there's so much to be done. Um, so, and so obviously there's a lot of that is in core. Um, you know, and, and so the, the way to differentiate to make sure that we're actually spurring that innovation, because that's like the most timely important and not, not spurring innovation that's not getting us forward to star shot. So that, that's kind of an open question, I think, as we, as we navigate, but like you said, a lot of what star shot needs is in core is core work. So how do we make that distinction? Yeah, I think it's right on. I think we have a lot to do to help kind of clarify some of these things. Yeah. Nash is, ask, is asking a question. I can take that, uh, Nash. Uh, to, the question is, how will you address the challenge uh, or management of worldwide time zones? And will those meetings be in the US or Europe time zones? So if you go to drupal.org slash starshot and you go to the the sessions that we've scheduled so far, like we've scheduled eight or nine sessions, you can see that the time zones um, kind of are all over the place-ish. Like some, some of the meetings are European friendly, some of them are US friendly, some of them are Australia friendly. Um, so I think the core team that's working on these things understands the challenges of time zones because even today, the Drupal core committer team with people all around the world. Yeah, so you can see, for example, here, um, some meetings are at 2.30, 8 a.m. Um, they're kind of a little bit all over the place. They're all in GMT, which um, I'd have to, have to calculate what that means <laughs> for different time zones, but um, we're trying to spread them out. Um, we will also record all of these meetings and we will make them available so people can watch them online. And then in Drupal, we've also gotten pretty good at using Slack and doing a lot of work asynchronously uh, to manage time zones as well. So we have um, ways that we do meetings online uh, with the Drupal core developers, for example, that's pretty efficient and actually doesn't require Zoom calls, um, but we can like make decisions in a timely way on Slack uh, while respecting people's work hours across different time zones as well. So we'll... I would say we have a long history of working across multiple time zones with um global community of contributors. And while it's not always perfect or not always easy, and it definitely requires some sacrifice sometimes, um, we, uh, we we really try to be mindful of it and, and to apply some best practices that we've learned over the years. So, Right, and I think... Um... So I know a lot of people listening to this call will be listening to a recording of it uh, because a lot of people that registered uh, to get the recording uh, are on the other side of the planet right now, hopefully uh, having a good night's sleep. Um, you know, I would like as a as an extension of that, as we look at contribution, um, um, financial contribution and time and talent, um, if there are different, you know, I know there's differences in exchange rates and other, other things like that, that we would like to be able to try to factor those into uh, contributions to everything's in U.S. dollars just to keep it simple and to be able to communicate that. Um, but we're, uh, we recognize that 
uh, you know, there may be advantages for folks uh, given exchange rate differences to contribute time and talent over over financial uh, anyway. So um, just always always be willing to engage in that conversation. Um, I think Kristen had a question about the star chart. Uh, wait. Uh, how will you be looking for a DA contribution coordinator, deliverer, or manager? Any timeline? Um, we will be looking very quickly. For one, um, is is the timeline we have to move on this, um, and so I'm. Uh, we have a fine, uh, close to a finalized um, uh, position description role. I've been working with Therese and others on that. Uh, we'll put that out um, and um, finding the right person quickly is going to be a priority. We're not using any one particular method to do that, um, but we're just trying to find the right person who can fulfill this role at the Drupal Association. It is Starshot related very much so, but it's a little bit larger than Starshot too, because Again, um, uh, we, we will have a number of things that are supportive of Starshot that has to happen to purely within the DA's walls, if you will, um, that we also need to be focused on. So um, stay tuned on that. If you know of anyone that would that's uh, available and um, would be a good candidate, please send them my way. Um, Glenn had a question. How many full-time contributors is Acquia committing to this initiative? <laughs> Wow, probing question, um, but it's a good question. Um, so I'm actually working through that right now, but it's probably going to be between 10 and 15. And that's across Starshot and Experience Builder. So, so between 10 and 15 full-time or almost full-time people. That's great. Yep. Yeah. We're, ex we're excited about it. Um, and uh, yeah, we think it's important for Drupal as Acquia. So we're going to be contributing. And I've had a lot of conversations like with various uh, agency owners in the last two weeks as well. I know a lot, a lot of others are willing to and getting ready to commit resources. So I expect there will be some announcements in the next few weeks too about others committing one, two, maybe more full-time employees for, especially between now and sort of the hopefully initial launch of Starshot. So if you want to join that fund, by all means, we would welcome your participation. Uh, another question, any plan for specific Starshot contribution events like Triple Contribution Weekend? Uh, Kristen, I like your thinking. Uh, keep it up. Um, so we actually... Um, we don't have concrete plans yet, but because all, all of this is so new, but we've already done a couple of things. Like one, we went to the Drupal uh, to the DrupalCon Europe uh, team and we said, hey, we think we need like a Starshot track, like essentially like like it, it's a like it's a thing, a DrupalCon, you know? And so they are working on creating a, a Starshot track together with um, the, <clears throat> the, the, the program committee, I guess it's called. Um, same thing is kind of shaping up for Drupal Dev Days, which is um, the number one, I would say, Drupal developer event. And that's happening in three weeks in Bulgaria. Um, usually attracts several hundred sort of people, and it's very technical Drupal uh, events, and they're actually prioritizing uh, Starshot as well. And so I think we're starting to see some of these things happen uh, organically, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, and I, I just love the idea of doing like Starshot contribution weekends, et cetera, et cetera, or having a track within the Drupal contribution weekend. So this is the kind of thinking that uh, I hope we can inspire many others with, you know, that people will, like, as I said in the Dries note, we want it to be a little bit like a movement, just like Moonshot was, or putting a person on the moon and create it like this movement you know, where everybody got involved and different companies got involved and people got passionate about it and started writing about it. And like, we just want to inspire people to do these kinds of things and to bring um, that kind of spark of excitement and fun uh, into the Drupal project. And uh, so uh, Starshot tracks, Starshot contribution events, um, other Starshot things we can do. Like maybe next time we can all show up to this meeting with space helmets or something just to kind of spark some fun and creativity. And 
and honestly that's where um a lot of you can help because uh you're many of you are running you know digital agencies which being creative is kind of what you do right uh, thinking about messaging positioning branding like we need a lot of help with that as well it's not just the technical stuff but also how can we be fun and interesting to the whole world so by all means think about that too so we have a couple more minutes and then we'll have to conclude the call um just as yeah i'm question. so sorry Go ahead. yeah no i i, I wanted to shoot my shot because that was actually he's just mentioned something that that i wanted to ask about so i one of my and i realized this this meeting's kind of about contributions, but I do want to ask about, I'm in the sales and marketing side of things, so kind of the front line of talking to potential users about this uh, in, the, in the coming months. As this rolls out and more info is released, how will the organization be messaging about it to the public? Or I suppose just any sort of, what is, what is the go-to-market strategy on it? Because as the re release gets closer, I, I want to be able to maneuver through any sort of market confusion or any questions. And I realize this is way early, right? But something mm -hmm. I've been thinking about. I think it's right on, Jim. Um, we've laid the foundations of that a little bit with the marketing committee and and the, the marketing work that we've been doing. Um, but like, we're going to have to think about the star should have a brand within the Drupal brands. And by the way, we just kind of announced a new brand for Drupal, but like, what does that mean for Starshot? And like, what's the name of Starshot? Because Starshot is a code name, uh, but the product may be called Drupal CMS or maybe something else. So that's work we need to do. We're going to have to figure out positioning and messaging for different audiences. Like how do we explain what it is to developers, but maybe more importantly for Starshot, how do we explain what it is to its target persona? Um, how do we explain it to content marketers? How do we explain it to, you know, side builders that live in marketing teams um, versus hardcore engineers, right? And how do we position it relative to the competitor? Like, how do we explain Starshot to people relative to, you know, a WordPress, relative to a side core, relative to an optimizely, whatever we decide are the key kind of competitors of it. We're going to need a lot of help with all of that as well. Um, and it's going to be, if we talk about work packages, there will definitely be like non-technical work packages, if you will. Um, we'll have like go-to market or um, product marketing work, work packages. Um, we will have design and user testing work packages as well, because soliciting feedback from potential end users is also going to be something that we want to do. So. We're, we're going to look at it holistically, not just as an engineering project, but engineering milestones. Like we need to look at it as um, like a grown up organization almost, all the way from the development piece to the marketing uh, piece uh, to the branding and all the stuff. So, and uh, yeah, I yeah. recognize that a lot of agencies can help with all of these things, not just with the technical piece. Yes. And I think that's a great advertisement for. Um, again, ways that you can contribute is not just developer time. It may be other things. Uh, I will say the um, uh, the board has a marketing working group um, that has led the, the initiative so far, the development of the go-to market plan, which did identify competitors and what needed to happen for Drupal to compete effectively against those competitors. Um, and that, that group um, will be kind of helping us think through what and Jim, you, that was a great question. What what are the next steps that we need to be thinking about as we, uh, you know, a lot of folks have been on the technical side. We also need to be thinking this side as we get certainly as we get closer to public announcements at DrupalCon Barcelona or DrupalCon Singapore, et cetera. So one of the things we want to do with these calls is to more regularly engage you as a Drupal certified partner on on these conversations. So. Um, what I'd like to do at this point is to conclude the call out of respect for everyone's time. We said it would be an hour and we're going to end at half past the hour. Um, but I hope this is the first of many over the over the coming year, not just on Starshot, but on other issues that are of interest um, to you as Drupal certified partners, what we're doing at the DA to support you. Um, uh, hopefully you'll see more of these types of engagements. 
Um, so just a reminder on next steps, um, uh, please start considering how your agency wants to contribute to Starshot. What do you have available and how, how would you want to do that? Um, look for our commit form that will be coming out for, to everyone who's registered for this um, uh, for this webinar, whether you're seeing it live or you're watching a recording. Uh, and then and then send that back into us and we will um, uh, our delivery manager will uh, reach out and engage with you on that. Um, and always feel free to, to contact me with any questions or Kelly Delaney, who's on the call and runs our partnership team. Um, so with that, I will conclude the call. Therese, thank you for participating. You're welcome. And Nash, thanks for putting a helmet on so quickly. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, uh, so thank you for your time listening to this call again, either live or in person. Look for our communication. And I look forward to engaging with, that, with each of you on Triple Star Shot. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.